What's up? And thanks for clicking in. My name is Jason and in this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Normally in my videos, we'll discuss and demo a new crypto D app, but that's not what we're doing here today. In this video, we're going to examine one of the biggest conspiracy theories of all time. This conspiracy theory has everything that you need to make a great story. Some of the richest, most powerful men in the world, greed, betrayal, and murder. So let's begin. A couple weeks ago, I was scrolling through Instagram and I came across a post from one of the best crypto follows on IG, the Cryptomaniacs. The post stated that three men aboard the RMS Titanic had strong opposition towards the creation of the Federal Reserve System in the United States. These three men all lost their lives when the unsinkable Titanic tragically sank on April 14th, 1912. Could this really be true? This post sparked a lot of questions that I need to get answered. So I spent the last couple of weeks researching this topic to find out if the greatest maritime disaster in history was actually an accident or some elaborate scheme to also create the most powerful entity in the world, the United States Federal Reserve. Now, before we get started, I do realize there are a lot of conspiracy theories around this event. The goal here is to show you what I've learned through my own research and let you come to a conclusion for yourself. Let's start off with some facts that lead us in the direction that maybe the sinking ship was not just an accident. So the IG post stated that three men, Benjamin Guggenheim, Isidore Strauss, and Jacob Astor, all millionaires who opposed the creation of the Federal Reserve, were on board the Titanic, tragically losing their lives when it sank. And that is in large part true. All three men were extraordinarily wealthy. They were on board and they did die when the Titanic went down. The fourth man of importance in this story is JP Morgan, one of the wealthiest and most powerful men in the world at the time. JP Morgan was the financier behind a company called the International Mercantile Marine Company, but more commonly referred to as IMM. IMM owned a company called the White Star Line, and the White Star Line owned the Titanic. Morgan was a strong proponent of the Federal Reserve System, and he was also supposed to be on the Titanic when it launched from Southampton. He did cancel his reservation at the last minute, supposedly due to illness. However, he was spotted just a few days after, seemingly feeling a lot better as he was shopping for exotic tapestries with his mistress throughout Europe. Is it possible that JP Morgan lured his enemies to sail on the Titanic, then low-key canceled his own ticket, knowing the whole time his real plan was to sink his own ship, eliminating any obstacles to the creation of the Fed? By now, we all know the story of the Titanic. It hit an iceberg at rapid speed, causing it to sink in the Atlantic Ocean. But the ship was said to be unsinkable. In fact, the engineer that designed the ship was on board when the Titanic struck the iceberg. After examining the damage, he stated to everyone on board that the ship would not sink. And yet two hours later, it was completely underwater and 1,500 people were dead. So what happened? The Titanic was scheduled to get its final inspection in Belfast before sailing down to Southampton before its grand departure on to the United States. A ship like the Titanic would take two to three days for a thorough inspection. However, the Titanic was inspected in two to three hours. The inspector signed off without even seeing the engine. And you might think if he went down and saw the engine, they may have noticed the massive fire burning in the coal bunkers. It's a known fact that the Titanic had a fire raging out of control for days and possibly weeks before it ever departed to New York. In fact, only one of the coal stokers stayed on with the company to continue working. And this was in the middle of a coal shortage, where work was very hard to come by. Yet all of these men walked off of the job. When there's a fire on a steam engine, it is very difficult to put out. The usual method is to shovel the burning coal into the engine faster. However, a direct effect of shoveling the coal faster is that the ship will also go faster. 
it is quite possible that dealing with the fire is what caused the Titanic to be sailing at such a high speed through iceberg infested waters. It does seem highly suspicious that JP Morgan canceled his reservation just hours before the ship was set to sail. None of the passengers on board were informed of the fire, but you have to think the owner of the ship would be privy to this information. As I mentioned earlier, the ship's designer was on board when the Titanic struck an iceberg. After looking at the damage, he did tell everyone on board that the ship would not sink. However, he was unaware of the raging inferno below. The ship was designed so that the bottom was to remain sealed in a separate compartment preventing any water from getting in. However, when the fire caused an explosion in the same spot the iceberg was struck, the unsinkable Titanic was doomed. To recap our story so far, we have some of the most powerful men in the world set to sail on the Titanic. JP Morgan, the owner of the ship, cancels his reservation at the very last minute. The Titanic has been on fire for days, yet it sets out to start its maiden voyage to New York. At this point, things were starting to add up for me, and I was thinking this crazy conspiracy may actually have some truth to it. However, the one part of the story where I can't find any evidence is, did these three men, Benjamin Guggenheim, Isidore Strauss, and Jacob Astor, actually oppose J.P. Morgan and the creation of the Federal Reserve? The question still remains, did J.P. Morgan deliberately sink his own ship to create a clear path for the creation of the Federal Reserve? The evidence does make it seem unlikely. However, if there's one thing that I've learned is that where there's smoke, there's usually fire. No pun intended. Please leave me a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next time, be safe.